Okay, so looking at transformations of exponential functions is very similar to pretty much any other function. The only thing is, is when we're looking at the horizontal direction, it all happens in the exponent. So our a value is still out front, our c value is still at the end, everything horizontal is at the top, it's still factored out. So if I was looking at these first graphs, um, if we were comparing kind of everything that happened, I'm not going to actually write it all down. What I'm going to do is just quickly graph each of them for you. So we're looking at the asymptote. If I flip it horizontally, the asymptote is not going to change. It's still going to be that negative value. All that's going to happen is the graph is going to flip down this way. So it's going to look, and I know they should be going through at the same point there. It's just pretty hard. I'm not going to zoom right in. So that's going to happen for that first one. So that's this graph here. If we were to flip it vertically, we still don't have a change in our asymptote. All that's actually happened is that we're going down now, and that's going infinitely closer again. Okay, so the asymptote doesn't change. The y-intercept for the first graph, the black one, is the exact same. For the second graph, it's just the negative version. We flipped it down. We've multiplied it by negative. Our domain will never change for any exponential. It's all going to always going to be all real numbers so negative infinity to positive infinity but for our range we've obviously flipped it down so rather than being equal to or sorry rather than being greater than zero it's now going to be less okay the next graph we're looking at here these are just the exact same graphs i don't know why i have them covered up here um the next graph when we have that three out front that's the a value so the three out front this time and I'm just drawing it slightly above so we can see it, but it's actually gonna increase the graph quicker. So that would be this graph here. Okay, it's just going quicker up um, with the A value being a fraction. We would do the same thing, but it's gonna be going up slower. Okay, exact same graph. Um, What's going to change is the y-intercept, because when I make x equals 0, typically the y-intercept is 1. Here we're multiplying 1 by 3, and then multiplying 1 by 1 quarter. So the y-intercept for the red graph would be 3, and the y-intercept for the purple graph would be a quarter, because 2 to those 0 gives us 1, so we're just multiplying it by our a value. Our a value actually tells us what our y-intercept is. Now the k value does the exact same thing as it typically would. So I'm in black, so we'll go to red here. So that's this graph, it's in red. The k value, if it's a four, it's gonna shrink it up. Okay, four times zero. So these are actually, I know they don't look like it, the same y-intercept because anything times zero isn't gonna change it. And then we'll go green, I guess. Expand it out again, same y-intercept, because anything times zero is still zero. Um, that's this graph. Domain and range don't change. Y-intercept doesn't change. Any k value is not going to change any of those values. The asymptote for all of these graphs hasn't changed. The only thing that's actually going to change the asymptote is the c value, because that's moving the whole graph up or down by that c value the c value is always going to tell us what our asymptote is so if we were looking at a graph like this it says graph at least four points now typically i wouldn't make you graph four points but for this one just for argument's sake we want to have four so that we've got a nice um easy thing to graph so our base function i'm going to graph the base function in blue so we've got zero and one is typically our graph our base function here is f at x equals 2 to the x, okay? 2 is our base, it doesn't change. 2 is here, our exponent is x. So 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the negative 1 would give us a half, okay? Now that one might be hard to change after, but good enough. All right. So now, if I was doing my transformations for this graph, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all of my values. So actually, we'll do this. We'll go through. We've got <clears throat> negative 1 and 0.5. We have 0 and 1, 1 and 2, and 2 and 4. 
First thing I'm going to do is take care of my A and my C, or sorry, my A and my K value. Okay, so I'm going to do two kind of transformations here. First, I'm going to do my A and K value. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do my H and my C at the end. Okay, so my A and my K. My A, I multiply all of my Y values by negative 3. So when we're looking at this, and our K value is actually easy here. Normally, we'd be dividing by K or multiplying by the reciprocal, but it's just negative 1. So that's just going to change all of my signs. All right, that's my K value is taken care of. The next thing we're gonna look at is the A value. So we're multiplying all of those by negative three. Oops, it's gonna be negative 1.5, negative three, negative six, and this one's gonna be off the graph, but that's okay. We're gonna have negative 12. So now I've taken care of that. The last thing I need to do is add 1 to all of my y values. Okay, so now I've got 1 and negative 0.5, 0 and negative 2. Um, what do we have here? Negative 1 and negative 5 and negative 2 negative 11. What's actually happened though is that one, and I always like to put these on the graph, and I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker just so that we can see it. That one has made this my asymptote. Okay, so that's my new asymptote when I'm graphing this. So I've got zero and negative two. There's my y-intercept. <coughs> negative one and negative five negative 2 and negative 11 won't work on the graph. It's going to be somewhere down here. Throw it down there. Why not? Um, and then we've got 1 and negative 0.5. So it's going to look something like that. Now, a lot of people struggle with this graph because what they end up doing is they round it off right there, which isn't right. We got to, or we should, be rounding it off at that asymptote. So we're going to come all the way up. Now we could find our x-intercept here and find exactly where it goes through, but for now, we'll just kind of leave it like that. So our domain, like always, still negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and we'll go round brackets. Our range in this case is negative infinity to one, and we're not including one. It's just gonna get ever so close to it. All right, so that's our four points. Now the next graph, now, if I was doing this one, um, our base graph, so f of x, is going to be 4 to the x. We're going to just do our two points this time. Um, we'll count by ones. It doesn't really matter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 5, 10, negative 5, negative 10, um, negative 5, and negative 10. <coughs> The two points that we're going to use, because we're just going to transpose two points, and we're going to have our basic shape and asymptote. Those are the things that I want you to graph. Two points, general shape, asymptote. Those are what I'm marking. So when we're looking at this, we've got our two points. And sometimes you want to do three. You want to do one on the left side, one on the right side of the y-intercept. But for now, we'll just do two. So what we're going to have is we're going to have zero and one. And then we're going to have one and four. 0 is always going to be 0, 1, and then 1 in the base are always what we're graphing. Now, the first thing I need to recognize here is that we need to factor that k value. So we're going to have 2, and then it's going to be x plus 3. So we have nothing changing to the y other than our multiplying by a half. Okay, so again, I'll do K and A first. So this becomes 0 0.5. This becomes 2. And our K value, we're multiplying by 1 over 2. So we get 0 and we get 0 0.5. And now, 
we have to move all of our x's 3 to the left. So this will be negative 3 and 0.5. And this will be negative 2.5 and 2. Now nothing's changed to our asymptote. So our asymptote is still at y equals 0. Nothing has changed for... <clears throat> um, nothing here has changed at all for the uh, domain and range because we're still above. We haven't done any reflections or anything like that. Our points that we have have just changed. Now you could find out what x equals zero is. That's always a nice point. The y-intercept's always a nice point to find. So we could do that down here. The y-intercept is gonna be equal to one half and then four times, or to the two to the six. Whoa. So uh, two to the six, or sorry, four to the six, it's gonna be a humongous number. And that's why we're not actually gonna find this. Um, a lot of people want to go through and find that, and that's why if you were to go through that, I'm not even going to make you write it down, but we're going to go negative 3 and 0.5. So negative 3 and 0.5 is right on my asymptote that I've driven. Negative 2 and 2.5. You can see right away that the graph is actually going up very quickly right there. So we're going to be getting way up there, and I'm going to draw my arrows. Typically, I wouldn't make my graph and my asymptote in the same color, and I would take a little bit more space. The equation of the asymptote here is y equals 0. You can see we didn't do it over here, but it was y equals 1 here. Now, our domain, like I just said, is negative infinity. Whoa, let's fix that. Negative infinity to positive infinity. And our range is 0 to positive